Okay, hello everyone. Uh, we are really happy to uh, speak today at this year's Hack Lou. This is Yves Kraft. My name is Immanuel Willi. We are both uh, penetration testers and security consultants uh, for one consult in Switzerland. Our goal for the next 30 minutes uh, will be to either create some awareness or to give you some neat ideas, uh, all depending on the size and colors of your hats. So let me start off with a quick question. Um, who has followed the hacking team incident? Followed as in read about it or downloaded all of their data or has been exposed? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. one guy. Okay. Um, so for the uninformed, um, hacking team used to be a pretty unethical Italian company uh, selling all sorts of software to all sorts of uh, customers and mostly governments, dictatorships. <laughs> um, until they were taken out by a single guy with the handle Phineas Fischer. Now, um, the interesting part, some months ago, Phineas Fischer released an extremely detailed write-up how he got into hacking team. Um, and we have here two selected paragraphs. Uh, I, I will give you a few seconds to read through them. So the two things that really stood out to us um, were his mentioning of using GPOs in an offensive way as well as um, his way of executing malware in the RAM of, uh, uptime, of a couple high uptime servers um, in Duke 2 style to create a persistence. Um, so after we, free, after we were reading through his write-up for multiple times, um, the idea of um, using group policies to distribute malware in a sneaky way to gain persistence in an automated manner kind of stuck to us. So we set ourselves the goal to create a tool to infect domain joint systems uh, using a backdoor in memory of high uptime servers. Steps to reach the goal were the creation or injection uh, into an existing group policy, uh, the deployment of a run or run once registry key, and the linking of the group policy uh, to the domain or uh, an arbitrary organizational unit, and finally, the wait uh, for the incoming connection. Uh, let's quickly take a step back. Uh, what are group policies? TLDR is uh, group policies allow you to manage all sorts of settings on Microsoft-based infrastructures, such as uh, pa password policies, Internet Explorer settings, and basically all the stuff you want to manage centrally if you're a lazy sysadmin. The thing is, though, with group policies, it tends to get messy. Group policies uh, usually are stored all over the place. People hardly follow naming conventions. Uh, when we look at active directories uh, from customers, there is always at least one group policy that is named test. No further information given what it actually does. So often they are grown historically, meaning they are not being decommissioned. So. Um, Temporary workarounds often become permanent fixes. At least for me, in my opinion, group policies are pretty hard to read if you're a human. And uh, there seems to be some problem with privileges, at least that's what uh, we have read about in the internet and a friend has told me, where you get into a situation where you have not enough privileges to see what the group policy that is applied to you is actually doing, even with domain admin rights. So we have not figured that one out yet. If someone has more information, we would be pretty glad if you come forward to us after the talk. 
So um, to refer to our initial uh, idea and our initial goal, um, we had our proof of concept up and running, which were basically a few lines of PowerShell code. Um, as in our daily pen testers life, we stumbled upon a project called PowerShell Empire. So uh, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel and decided to uh, turn our proof of concept into PowerShell Empire modules. Um, for those who already know PowerShell Empire, um, let's have a chat afterwards. For those who are not familiar with it, PowerShell Empire is a post-exploitation framework purely based on uh, PowerShell. It's a uh, module-based, kind of similar to the Metasploit framework, and it's all uh, crypto-secure regarding communications. Uh, there are some HTTP requests which contain the payloads and the information that, and the data sent between attacker and target. From a forensic point of view, we do have a really small footprint. First of all, we're using a Windows standard application, PowerShell.exe, which is available on each and every Windows system and uh, enabled by default. And second, uh, this process will completely run in memory, so uh, an antivirus will have a really hard time to detect PowerShell. And uh, if you want to mo learn more about PowerShell Empire, feel free to visit their website or their GitHub repository. Kudos to HarmJoy, uh, Enigma, and Sixtop to putting together such great framework. And uh, because PowerShell is awesome and building an empire with it even more. So um, let me tell you a story. Imagine a red team engagement, which may or may happen in a similar way. A uh, customer called us, let's call him corp.com, um, and we're told to get into the company, corp.com, uh, and steal their crown jewels. Uh, let's say uh, that's a file located on a file server called proof.txt. As we later uh, discovered, the company had segmented their network into various departments, various server and client networks, and so on. So um, there are a lot of ways to get into companies, and especially into corp.com. We chose the social engineering way to get the first foothold in it, um, as they used a well-known PDF reader, having some sort of buffer overflow condition, which they exploited to get uh, the first foothold. Later on, we did some information gathering, snooping at some files locally on the box and on the network shares, and found an install script containing admin credentials in plain text, username, and password. In combination of this local admin credentials and Mimikatz, we were able to get uh, domain admin credentials on one of the IT boxes in the IT department. So. Um, we pretty much almost reached the goal. Last step would be to search for the file. Now, to come back to our scenario, to our initial idea, um, to set the context, first, we need to have PowerShell Empire installed on our attacker machine. Uh, this will be used to start a listener on our box. We need to have a so-called launcher launched on our uh, target waiting system. This launcher will connect back to us and use kind of a stage technique to deliver a so-called agent on our victim machine. From this point on, we do have complete control inside of uh, PowerShell Empire on the domain controller of corp.com. Now, to follow the initial idea, we wanted to create a group policy, group policy object, GPO inside the Active Directory and distribute it all over corps.com domain. So um, next step would be to get persistence for an initial task. Um, we would like to switch to uh, demo mode 
uh, we hope to have sacrificed enough to the demo gods and we're trying the live version. Um, the approach would be to create a new GPO by using our uh, self-written module, uh, GP registry value, which will actually set a run once key in the registry um, just to survive the next boot of uh, the system. Now, let's first have a look at the domain controller um, in the group policy management console. As you can see, there are four policies, actually. Um, two of them are uh, standard Windows Microsoft policies, uh, the default domain and the default domain controller policy. And it appears to be that corp.com has two own policies regulating some things in their domain. So let's switch to our attacker machine. Empire is already running, and we do have uh, an agent uh, on the domain controller already set. So uh, we interact with this agent and use uh, the module, uh, like I already mentioned, uh, it's called set GP registry value. To save time, we already pre filled some values. As you can see, there is a new GPO, which will be created, called uh, Hacklu, um, will have a not suspicious registry value set, uh, popping a calc.exe in the run once run option. If we run the module and uh, will instantly, having feedback that the module uh, run completely and by refreshing the domain controller view, we actually got our newly created tag loop policy. By uh, getting to the settings, as you can see, maybe it's a little bit hard to read. There is a new registry setting uh, in the run once called uh, not suspicious, popping a calc.exe just for demo purposes at the next boot time. And of course, uh, we set the linking option to true, so the hack loop policy will be linked to the whole domain of corpse.com and will be distributed all over the place at the domain, to each and every domain joint system. Great, so first demo worked. Happy for that one. Switching back to the demo mode, uh, from the demo mode to the presentation mode, um, Let's have again a closer look at our attack scenario as the initial goal was to get this proof.txt containing an MD5 have some. Um, we have our agent running on the domain controller and the uh, last step is to search for this file. Um, as we did not expect, uh, looking at the active directory of corp.com, they had about 80 to 90 servers. So um, we didn't expect for a small, mid-sized Swiss company to have that much servers. So possibility number one is to log in on each and every server, search for the file. If we fail, get to the next. This would be very loud, very noisy, very uncomfortable, and uh, not our style, definitely. So um, having all those proof of concepts and uh, PowerShell Empire modules, um, we decided to take another way. We create a GPO and distribute it to the server. This uh, GPO will contain a, a malicious part, um, just like uh, Phineas Fisher did in his attack. Um, first, we would like to read out all the existing GPOs with the get GPO module we've written, and afterwards we choose an existing module to uh, alter the firewall rules. So we create a new firewall rule, opening some ports, and uh, if needed, start the WMI service uh, because this will be used later to search the proof.txt. So let's switch again to the demo mode, second part.
we use the module uh, get GPO already uh, pre-filled with some values. Uh, we set the option all to true, which will actually give us all the GPOs located at corp.com. Hitting run will just give the output of the completed module, uh, which will contain actually the four plus the one we created before, uh, the default policies, the corp.com policies, and the hack loop policy we created just a few minutes ago. So um, we would like to use the core base hardening policy to inject our uh, malicious content. For this, we use the module new GP firewall rule, which uh, also is pre-filled. Um, regarding to the options, uh, almost everything uh, you can set inside the GUI is also uh, reachable with an option, let's say from local port to remote port, uh, deny rule, allow rule, and so on. So we're just uh, setting the GPO name to an existing one, the corp base hardening, and uh, as we decided uh, before the talk, we would like to get all in, and we just open up any any uh, on the box. Hitting run will uh, run the module, of course, um, giving us instantly feedback that the new rule uh, has been created. Now switching over to our uh, victim machine, the domain controller, we have a look at the base hardening policy at the settings, settings tab showing all settings, and while scrolling down, as you can see, there is a new uh, firewall rule called Hacklu, which will open up any port on the servers at corp.com. So um, now I propose to grab some coffee because we have to wait 90 minutes. In a standard Windows environment, uh, group policy objects uh, will be deployed every 90 minutes. So um, we did not get a two-hour slot for our talk, and we want to save time. And we wrote another module, which actually will remotely invoke the GP update. By switching back to our Empire console, we use the module located on the persistence elevated invoke GP update. The options are already set. We use a, a filter to apply it to each and every system in the corp.com domain. There will be also the possibility to have a delay. Uh, this is actually set to zero. If we run the module and switch instantly back to the server, we maybe grab the output. Yes, there is the output for the updating policy. So the policy actually now is uh, triggered on the server. And uh, if we go into the advanced firewall rule set, refreshing the view, there will maybe find a hack loop rule, hopefully. Yes, great. So there is our newly created rule, hack loop will which act actually open up the ports like we uh, did already. Say uh, local port, remote port, all ports will be any any open. So um, last step for our attack, um, we grab a PowerShell console and uh, have having a command which actually grabs some IPs from the text file, those are all the servers of corp.com, which will pipe into uh, a search command which will search for all proof files with the name proof and the extension txt. And hopefully we'll get to the crown jewels, maybe, maybe not. That tends to go too long. Okay, they found it. Okay, so um, located at some file server, there is a text file called proof.txt, so mission accomplished. A 
let's hold on for a second and uh, summarize the attack we just showed. Um, there are uh, solid advantages by using offensive GPOs during an attack. Um, first of all, there is no need to download and install any executable or any further software. We used Microsoft standard procedures, Microsoft standard techniques every system administrator would also use. Uh, so uh, we had the possibility to make the attack works with completely onboard uh, tools from Microsoft. Second, uh, thus, uh, we're running on onboard tools. IDS, IPS, and monitoring solution will really have a hard time to detect such malicious activities. And of course, defeating barriers such as firewalls and uh, network segment, either logical or physical, isn't a big thing anymore. Um, that was not the case at corp.com, but imagine kind of a hardened environment where uh, everything is segmented, uh, protected by firewalls, uh, maybe some RTP protocols, user logins, admin logins are not possible from each and every system. But our GPOs will be distributed like a charm. Um, of course, we have the possibility to reach out to each and every domain joint system. So um, I think that's a pretty comfortable way to gain persistence and uh, move around the network like, uh, like we do. So um, countermeasures. We literally had to throw away our countermeasure slide, uh, referring uh, to talk we so this morning, um, thanks for that one, uh, we propose to just use the seven axioms uh, we saw this morning. Um, but uh, to show our initial slide uh, for countermeasures in the German-speaking uh, part, uh, we do have an expression so-called the, the Eierlegende Wollmilchsau which uh, translates actually to a uh, egg-laying wool and milk-eating pig, um, kind of a expression uh, for a fantasy figure uh, for an egg-laying pig with a wooden skin uh, which produces milk, as well as uh, the symbol of a combination that requirements, criteria, features, and so on uh, are impossible to have. So this kind of all-in-one solution, unfortunately, does not exist. Um, first of all, if a non-authorized third party has domain admin rights in your domain, you're basically screwed anyway. So GPOs, I think, isn't the first thing you want to fix. But there are some ideas uh, for things you can do. Maybe you'll come up with your own. Um, but of course, reviewing your GPOs on a regular basis may be a good idea to detect some malicious content. Um, maybe limit your system administrators, uh, the privilege of them using the least privilege principle. Maybe restrict the application usage using some uh, whitelisting methods uh, to only allow the software and the executables you want to have launched. And of course, monitoring intrusion detection is a big thing, either to detect the anomaly during an attack or later on for a further analysis if an attack happened. And of course, uh, to have a healthy information security ecosystem is a good idea anyway. So we do have uh, some ideas for future work. We already did some steps on our path and implemented some modules. Um, not all of them are public yet. We do have a, a pull request pending, which will hopefully uh, will be merged soon into the main branch of PowerShell Empire. Um, but we do like to cover more attacks and implement even more PowerShell Empire modules, which are related to GPOs. So, um, please contact us if you uh, want to have any 
uh, further information we're sticking around at the conference, feel free uh, to contact us. So for now, I think that's it. Thank you for your attention. Um, if there are any questions, we would be happy to answer them right now. Thank you.